very good evening to all the viewers who have joined here for the next important uh, system which we are going to discuss today that is going to be your endocrinology already we have completed uh, cardiology and rheumatology in detail along with test and discussion and today we are going to start with the next important system that is going to be your endocrinology this will be the first session and we have already shared the for uh, upcoming sessions date also so kindly note down those session and also join them regularly thank you ma'am for joining with us today and i hand over the session to you ma'am thank you so much so uh, this is the first topic as he said and um, actually this endocrinology is very very uh, you know difficult to understand but it is very fun also to learn and it is very very high yielding in your exams also so i would like all of you to pay a lot of attention especially this topic it's going to be a very short one uh, compared to other compared to our other other you know topics that we have discussed earlier but this will is very high yielding at least one or two questions usually come from this topic alone so i suggest like all of you listen to this um, you know chapter very nicely okay yeah so let's start so hormones and the mechanism of action okay so from the basics what are hormones what do you think are hormones like all of us would have studied this in physiology i think it's time to revise rather than it being a more uh, you know one way teaching so all of us can revise together so what are hormones we know they are chemical messengers right what are hormones they are chemical messengers right they are secreted by what they are secreted by endocrine glands they are secreted by endocrine glands and they perform multiple different actions in the body okay they regulate the growth they regulate the metabolism in the body they regulate the cell function so they regulate so many things in the body so these are basically hormones they are chemical messengers which are secreted by endocrine glands they can either act locally or they can go uh, there we circulate in the blood and travel to another place to perform its action right so they are hormones what do they do they regulate cell growth metabolism of the body right etc so main main functions are growth and metabolism okay so this is hormones yes so how do we classify hormones there are two three classifications available but the two most important ones are you classify the endo uh, uh, hormones based on the chemical nature and based on the mechanism of action right you classify them based on the chemical nature and the mechanism of action chemical nature is nothing but the structural component what is it made up of and what function does it carry okay and the mechanism of action right how it acts what are the messengers through which it acts so you classify the uh, the hormones based on the chemical nature as well as the mechanism of action right yes so based on the structure or the chemical nature how do you actually classify the hormones there are five types how many types are there there are five types so i would request you to remember this so that it will be very easy when you are classifying the um, things based on each one so you should not get confused whether it's an amino acid or a peptide or a glycoprotein right so you need to remember the examples also very easily so first you need to understand and later after that once you understand the concept you need to mug mug this topic a little bit because these uh, examples are quite difficult to remember so may you might get confused in the exam so i want you to go through it again and again so that you don't miss out on these easy mcqs right yes so what is the first one the first type is it's an amino acid derivative right for the first one is amino acid derivatives the second is peptide hormones the third is glycoprotein hormones fourth is vitamin derivatives and the fifth is steroid hormones right amino acid derivatives peptide hormones glycoprotein hormones vitamin derivatives and steroid hormones right so we'll discuss each one separately so amino acid derivatives among the amino acid derivatives the first one is amino acid derivatives among that two amino acids are very very important two amino acids are very 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 important both start with t right both start with t the first one is tyrosine and the second one is tryptophan the first one is tyrosine and the second amino acid is tryptophan right let me write this clearly for you tryptophan uh, tyrosine and tryptophan so what are the enzymes which are derived from tyrosine and what are the enzymes which are derived from tryptophan we need to know that right so what are the enzymes derived from tyrosine it is t3 t4 
and catecholamines. Catecholamines, right? T3, T4 and catecholamines. So let us name the catecholamines. What are the catecholamines? It is epinephrine, norepinephrine and dopamine. Right? It is epinephrine, norepinephrine and dopamine. So what are the tyrosine derivatives? 2Ts, T3 and T4 and catecholamines. So all has three in the name, T in the name. So you must remember the tyrosine residues. Tyrosine derivatives, T3, T4 and catecholamines. What are the catecholamines? Epinephrine, norepinephrine and dopamine. Right? Next is tryptophan derivatives. So what are the tryptophan derivatives? They are mainly serotonin and melatonin. Right? Serotonin and melatonin. Right? Melatonin, what does it do? It regulates our sleep-wake cycle. Right? It regulates our sleep-wake cycle. And what about serotonin? When serotonin is less, the patient is in depression. Right? It has a role in depression. Basically, it means an uplifted mood for us, right? It is a hormone of happiness. It means the uplift, it maintains an uplifted mood for us. So that is serotonin. Melatonin, whereas it is helping in the sleep-wake cycle. So the two most important amino acid derivatives you must remember are it is derived from tyrosine or tryptophan. If it is derived, derived from tyrosine, what all do you get? You get T3, T4 and catecholamines. What are the catecholamines? Epinephrine, norepinephrine and dopamine. So, what are the tryptophan derivatives? It is serotonin and melatonin. Right? Serotonin and melatonin. Okay. Yes. So, the next one. What are the peptide hormones? What are the peptide hormones? So, among the peptide hormones, you have either small peptides. Depending on the number of amino acids involved, you divide it as small peptides and large peptides. Right? Small peptides and large peptides. So, what does small peptides mean? How many amino acids will be there? Less than 50 amino acids. And large peptides will have more than 50 amino acids. So, you multiple amino acids completed, co combined together, you call it as a peptide. Right? A peptide can be a small peptide, you know, like an oligopeptide or a large peptide. Small peptides or oligopeptides. In the hormones, how do you differentiate? If it is less than 50 amino acids, you call it as small peptides. If it is more than 50 amino acids, you call it as large peptides. So, among the uh, small peptides, which are the most important hormones? First is the hypothalamic hormones. Hypothalamic hormones. What are the hypothalamic hormones? We'll see that. Hypothalamic hormones, right? The next one will be posterior pituitary hormones. Posterior pituitary hormones. Posterior pituitary hormones. So, among the posterior pituitary hormones, which is one ADH and oxytocin, right? ADH and oxytocin, ADH and oxytocin, hypothalamic hormones and the posterior pituitary hormones, namely ADH and oxytocin. Along with that, you also have ACTH. All these three are small peptide hormones, hypothalamic hormones, posterior pituitary hormones and AD, AD, uh, which is ADH and oxytocin and ACTH. All these three fall under the small peptides. Right. Now coming to the large peptides. Which do you think is the first one? You need to remember growth hormone, insulin, then prolactin. Growth hormone, insulin, prolactin, then PTH and renin. If you remember PTH and renin, they are secreted in the proactive form, right? Pro from. And then it is broken down to get the actual form. So, this is very, very important. They are large peptides. Growth hormone, insulin, prolactin, PTH and renin. Okay. We saw the first amino acid derivatives. They are mainly derived from tyrosine and tryptophan. From tyrosine, you get T3, T4, catecholamines. From tryptophan, you get serotonin, melatonin. From the peptide hormones, what are they? Small peptides, large peptides. Large peptides are growth hormone, insulin, prolactin, PTH, renin. Five. Small peptides are three. Hypothalamic hormones, posterior pituitary hormones, namely ADH and oxytocin. And the third one will be ACTH. Okay. Yes. So, what is the next one? Glycoprotein hormones. So, what do you actually mean by glycoprotein? Glycoprotein hormones. So, the hormones are basically peptides, right? The hormones are basically made up of amino acids. Along with that, a carbohydrate moiety is attached. Okay. Along with that, a carbohydrate moiety is attached. Okay, so that is why you call it as a glycoprotein. 
the carbohydrate quantity is lesser in number and the protein is actually a peptide to which a carbohydrate moiety is attached. Okay, it's not like a big carbohydrate moiety to which a small protein is attached. It is actually a protein, a peptide to which a glyco, glyco that is a carbohydrate moiety is getting attached. Okay, so it's a glycoprotein. So what are the glycoprotein hormones that you must remember? It's very easy to remember, all ending with SH. Okay, TSH, LH and FSH. TSH, LH and FSH. Okay, so this is basically carbohydrate hydrate plus protein. Carbohydrate plus protein, that is glycoprotein. TSH, LH and FSH. Okay, so the next one will be vitamin derivatives. Vitamins. So among the vitamins, which do you think is the hormone? There are two vitamins, which are fat-soluble vitamins, and we consider them to be a hormone. Which are the two? Vitamin A, vitamin A, and vitamin D. Okay, vitamin A and vitamin D, they are considered to be hormones. They have a hormone-like action. So vitamin A and vitamin D are hormone derivatives. Vitamin derivatives. So the next one is, Steroid hormones. Steroid hormones. So among the steroid hormones, it's either from the adrenal, adrenal gland. So it's an either adrenal adrenocortical hormone. It's either an adrenocortical hormone or it is a sex steroid. Right? It is a either adrenocortical hormone or a sex steroid. So among the adrenocortical hormone, what do you think it is? It is cortisol. It is either cortisol or aldosterone. So what are the adrenocortical hormones? Cortisol or aldosterone. What are the sex steroids? Estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, dihydroepiandosterone, androstenedione. All these things are sex steroids. Right? Adenocortical hormones or sex, sex steroids. Adenocortical hormones are cortisol or aldosterone. Among the sex steroids, you have estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, DHEAs, all those things. So let us now just revise this. Amino acid derivatives we have derived from tyrosine or tryptophan. Tyrosine is T3, T4 and catecholamines, epinephrine, norepinephrine and dopamine. From tryptophan, we have serotonin and melatonin. Peptide hormones, you have small peptides or large peptides. Small peptides, you have hypothalamic hormones, post epitutary hormones, ADH or oxytocin and ACTH. Large peptides, you have growth hormone, insulin, prolactin, PTH or renin. Right? Glycoproteins, a protein with a carbohydrate moiety. You have TSH, LH and FSH. Vitamin derivatives, you have vitamin A and vitamin D. From the steroid hormones, you have adrenocortical hormones or the sex steroids. Adrenocortical hormones are cortisol or aldosterone and the sex steroids are estrogen, testosterone, DHEAs, progesterone, etc. Okay. So, all these things are based on the structure or the chemical nature of the hormone. Right? Okay. So, let us now proceed. Based on the mechanism of action. Right? Based on the mechanism of action. So, you have group 1 and group 2 hormones. Based on the mechanism of action, you have something called group 1 hormones and group 2 hormones. Right? What is the basic difference between these two? I'll tell you the basic difference and then we'll discuss each one in detail. Okay. We'll discuss the basic things and then we'll discuss each one in detail. So what are the group 1 hormones? What are the group 1 hormones? Basically, they are those which have intracellular receptors. Okay. Intracellular receptors. And the group 2 hormones are those which have Cell membrane receptors. Group 2 hormones are those which have cell membrane receptors. Okay. So, group 1 hormones are those which have intracellular receptors. And group 2 are, hormones are those which have cell membrane receptors. Right. Intracellular receptors and cell membrane receptors. So, we can discuss each one in detail now. Okay. So, group 1 hormones. I told you they have a Intracellular receptor. This cellular receptor, intracellular receptor can be either in the cytoplasm or in the nucleus. It can be an intranuclear receptor or an intracytoplasmic receptor. So group 1 hormones, you need to keep this keep revising this. Group 1 hormones are those which have an intracellular receptor. Okay. So group 1 hormones are again classified into two. 
those which have a cytoplasmic receptor those which have a cytoplasmic receptor and those which have a nuclear receptor those which have a nuclear receptor cytoplasmic receptor you must remember they are called type 1 hormones among the group 1 they are type 1 hormones group 1 type 1 hormones are those which have a cytoplasmic receptor group 1 type 1 right nuclear receptors are those which are having intranuclear receptors and these are called type 2 receptors among the group 1 hormones, there are type 1 or type 1 receptors or type 2 receptors, type 2 hormones. Type 1 hormones or type 2 hormones, cytoplasmic or nuclear receptors. Right. So, this is based on the receptors. So, what are the examples? Group 1 receptors are mainly steroid hormones. Right. They mainly steroid hormones. Right. Type 2 hormones, especially T3, T4, and vitamin A or vitamin D. Right. All these are type 2 receptors. Type 1 and type 2 receptors. Type 1 are cytoplasmic receptors. Group 1 hormones, let me revise. Group 1 hormones are those which have I mean intracellular receptors. Among that, you can have a cytoplasmic receptor or a nuclear receptor. If it is a cytoplasmic receptor, it's called a type 1 hormone. And if it has a nuclear receptor, it's called a type 2 hormone. Type 1 hormones are usually steroid hormones. Type 2 are usually T3, T4, vitamin A and vitamin D. Okay. So, how does this basically act? How does this basically act? You have a hormone which is coming in and there is a receptor. Okay. It acts by the formation of a hormone receptor complex. Right. Hormone receptor complex. A hormone receptor complex is formed. What does that do? It causes gene transcription. Right. It causes gene transcription. This might be a bit boring for you, but it is very, very important for you to understand the concept so that you can mug it up later and answer the questions very easily. Right. Surely, definitely one or two MCQs will definitely come from this topic. Okay. And it's a very basic question which you can answer very easily. Okay. So, I want all of you to pay some attention here. So, how does the group 1 hormones act? They act by the formation of a hormone receptor complex. Okay. So, this hormone receptor complex, what does it do? It, cross, it uh, in the end causes gene transcription. Right? How does it do? It goes and binds to the particular uh, segment of the DNA, the nuclear material, which then causes gene transcription. Right? So, this is what the cellular response is got. Okay? So, what happens? This uh, inactive state, the steroid will be bound, bound to the heat shock proteins. What will it do? It will be bound to the heat shock proteins in the inactive state. So, once it is activated with the steroid receptor, what will it do? The heat shock proteins are released the heat shock proteins will be released. Then what will happen? This hormone receptor complex will go into the nucleus. Right? It will go into the nucleus and then bind to the what, some, what is called hormone responsive element. You need to remember these terms. These are very, very important. Hormone response element. Hormone response element. That is a sequence on the DNA. Right? It is a hormone response element to which it binds and thereby causing gene transcription. Thereafter causing gene transcription. Right? What does the hormone receptor complex do? Usually, what does it do? A steroid in the inactive state, that steroid receptor is bound to the heat shock protein. Right? A heat shock protein is bound to the steroid receptor. So, when a steroid comes and binds to the heat shock, he binds to the steroid receptor, what happens? The heat shock protein is released. The heat shock protein is released and this hormone receptor complex goes into the nucleus and what does it do? It gets attached to the hormone response element on the DNA because of which it causes gene transcription and the cellular response is brought, brought about. Okay. And the cellular response is brought about. Okay. So, this is how it acts. So, this is an example of a cytoplasmic receptor. For an example of a nuclear receptor, I will tell you something which is very, very interesting. All of us know the pyoglitazone, right? We have heard something about pyoglitazone. Pyoglitazone is nothing but pyoglitazone. Pyoglitazone is what? PPAR gamma agonist. PPAR gamma agonist. What does it do? It is a thiosolidinidione. Thiosolidinidione, it is an anti-diabetic drug, right? It has a nuclear receptor. It has a nuclear receptor, intranuclear receptor. And what is the ligand for this? The ligand is free fatty acids. So, when the free fatty acids come and bind because of pyoglitazone, what does it do? What does it do? It activates this PPAR gamma 
this pioglitazone it acts as an agonist for this and what does it do it will actually help in reducing the sugar levels right so this is what it does so this is an example also of a type 2 receptor type 2 hormone this is also an example of a type 2 hormone there is one more example one more drug which is very very important saroglitazar right saroglitazar glitazar which is a ppar alpha and gamma agonist ppar alpha combined ppar alpha and gamma agonist you need to remember these two uh, drugs pioglitazone and saroglitazor pioglitazone and saroglitazar you need to remember these two which are type 2 or which are uh, uh, which have type 2 receptors nuclear receptors okay pioglitazone and saroglitazar these two drugs they can come they can come in the question okay they can come in the question pioglitazone and saroglitazar okay yes so this is what then let's talk about group 2 hormones right so let's talk about group 2 hormones so what are group 2 hormones i told you they have a cell membrane receptor right they have a cell membrane receptor cell membrane receptor so group 1 hormones they have type 1 hormones and type 2 hormones type 1 hormones are those which have an intracytoplasmic receptor in type 2 are those which have an intranuclear receptor right group 2 hormones are those which have a cell membrane receptor okay so cell membrane how does this work i told you group 1 hormones they act by formation of a hormone receptor complex right how do you think group 2 hormones act group 2 hormones basically act by the second messengers second messengers there are many second messengers i will explain each one of you each one in detail okay there are many second messengers okay there are many many second messengers which are involved in the uh, you know mechanism of action of these hormones right so these mainly act through second messengers there are many signaling pathways which have second messengers these second messengers are those which bring about the action of these group 2 hormones okay these second messengers what do they do they cause protein modification they cause protein modification because of which they cause protein modification because of which usually channels are opened up channels are opened up and the action is brought about channels are opened up or action is brought about so here you can see there is a cell membrane receptor to which the hormone binds it is usually a non-steroidal hormone because i told you a steroid hormone will have either a nuclear receptor or it will have a intracellular receptor right and the secondary messengers second messengers are activated because of which there is an activated enzyme which is produced and which activated enzyme will produce a you know which is this activated enzyme will bring about all the actions of that particular thing okay it will bring about the actions of that particular hormone right a hormone is not acting directly but it is acting through the uh, second messengers okay so among this group 2 hormones you have multiple uh, receptor pathways multiple receptor pathways are there so we'll discuss each one in detail so first is you have four main important ones let me tell you that before we proceed in detail first is g protein coupled receptor g protein coupled receptor then tyrosine kinase receptor tyrosine kinase receptor janus kinase receptor janus kinase receptor jack receptor then it is serine threonine kinase receptor you have four g protein coupled receptor tyrosine kinase receptor janus kinase receptor serine threonine kinase receptor okay g protein coupled receptor tyrosine kinase receptor janus kinase receptor and serine threonine kinase receptor okay so you have all these things so let us start with g protein coupled receptor right first let's start with g protein coupled receptor right so g protein coupled receptor so let's draw draw a cell okay we now have a cell let me draw it a big bigger for you to understand so you now have a cell so what is this g protein coupled receptor there is a you know there is a protein on the cell membrane which is traversing the membrane seven times which is traversing the membrane seven times this is called a serpentine receptor it is also called the g protein receptor is also called a serpentine receptor serpentine receptor because it is like a snake serpentine receptor okay so what is this attached to this g protein is attached to a this g protein is attached to a g protein okay this molecule is attached to a g protein there are some varieties of this g 
इट कैन इधर बी जी आई जी एस जी क्यू और जी टी ओके इट कैन बी वन ऑफ दो जी आई जी एस जी क्यू और जी टी आई टेल यू ईच वन सेपरेटली ओके सो जी इट इज अटैच टू जी प्रोटीन ओके से वॉट इज दिस डू सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट फर्स्ट जी एस ओके लेट इज टॉक अबाउट जी एस फर्स्ट सो दिस इनिशियली इज अटैच टू एन ए डी पी मॉलिक्यूल ओके इन द इन एक्टिव स्टेट वॉट इज इट डू इन द इन एक्टिव स्टेट दिस इज अटैच टू एन ए डी पी मॉलिक्यूल ओके सो नाउ वॉट हैपन्स अलाइगन कम्स एंड जॉइंस सो वॉट इज दिस दिस इज अ हॉर्मोन राइट अलाइगन कम्स एंड जॉइंस दिस इज अ हॉर्मोन राइट वॉट इज इट दिस डू बिकॉज ऑफ इट्स एक्शन ऑफ कमिंग एंड अटैचिंग टू दिस जी प्रोटीन it should become active but how does it become active this adp is getting converted to adp this is this g protein along with it is getting converted adp is convert getting converted to atp gtp sorry gtp sorry sorry this is having gdp okay this is having gdp this is getting converted to gtp this is getting converted to gtp so what does this do this will activate the enzyme adenylyl cyclase this will activate the enzyme adenylyl cyclase this will activate the enzyme adenylyl cyclase adenylyl cyclase when this adenylyl cyclase is activated what will it do it will convert the gtp to gdp and then this gtp will get converted now to gtp will get converted to gdp in the process what happens in this process this what will happen one phosphate is released right one phosphate is released isn't it what will this do this will convert atp to it will convert atp to cyclic amp this will convert atp to cyclic amp right what does the cyclic amp do this will activate protein kinase a protein kinase a this protein kinase a is the enzyme which will actually phosphorylate all the other proteins this is involved in phosphorylation right this is involved in phosphorylation of all the proteins and thereby bringing out the apex so in a gs protein gs subunit of the gpcr you know g g protein coupled receptor protein kinase a is the enzyme which actually brings about all the actions of this hormone right in the gs subunit when a hormone acts and acts to acts on the g protein coupled receptor what does it do from the inactive state it goes on to the active state because of which it activates the enzyme adenylyl cyclase but adenylyl cyclase is not the enzyme which brings about the actions it is the production of cyclic amp which causes the activation of protein kinase a what is this enzyme this is protein kinase a protein kinase a this is the enzyme which actually causes phosphorylation of multiple enzymes and proteins and brings about the action of this hormone right so this is gs this is one pathway okay gs is associated with cyclic amp production and protein kinase a activation right protein kinase a activation so let us now discuss something about gi right gi so let me now draw this here again this is a transmembrane protein which traverses the uh, which traverses the cell membrane seven times which traverses the cell membrane seven times now what do you have here you have a gi subunit you have a gi subunit so this also in the inactive state it is attached to gdp and later when it becomes active it is getting attached to gtp right a hormone is there it has come and activated this because of which this is getting activated now what does this do it activates the there is an enzyme there is an enzyme on the cell membrane which is called phospholipase c phospholipase c okay phospho lipase c what does this phospholipase c do what does this do like this adenylyl cyclase you have something called phospholipase c here this is getting activated which will there is a pip2 phospho inositol diphosphate okay this protein is there inside the cell membrane this phospholipid is there in the cell membrane what does this do this is getting converted to diacylglycerol plus ip3 right diacylglycerol dag plus inositol triphosphate dag plus ip3 inositol triphosphate plus diacylglycerol so what does this dag do it will go and activate protein kinase c what does this activate it activates protein kinase c so because of this what is what happens there is lot of phosphorylation happening this phosphorylation what does it do calcium calmodulin complex is formed 
calcium cal modulin complex is formed because of which it has all the actions okay so which is the enzyme which is getting activated in the gi pathway it is protein kinase c so let me reverse gs it is protein kinase a and cyclic amp is involved this is a second messenger cyclic amp is the second messenger in gi gi which is it which is the enzyme which is activated it is protein kinase c and what is the second messenger here dag ip3 okay this is the second messenger so in this it is the second messenger is pka cyclic amp in gi it is dag ip3 diacylglycerol and inositol triphosphate okay so this is the g protein coupled receptor this is very very important for you to understand because the hormone acts through this pathway you need to remember the, which are the hormones which are acting on that and also the second messenger so gs it will be cyclic amp G, gi it will be inositol triphosphate plus diacylglycerol okay so let me now tell you some examples of these hormones right let me now tell you the examples of these hormones so let's see gs g uh, gs gi and gq right this is gq okay this is gq sorry this is gq i'm very sorry so please note this is not gi this is gq okay gi is nothing but the uh, down regulation of cyclic amp production gs is stimulation it causes up regulation of cyclic amp production whereas gi is basically inhibition of the cyclic amp production Okay, and GQ is this inositol triphosphate plus diacylglycerol. I'm sorry for the error. Okay, please note it. So GS, what are the hormones which act through GS? Like what are the hormones which act through GS? So let me tell you one small, uh, you know, mnemonic. Fat, champ. Right, fat, champ. So what is fat, champ? F is for FSH. A is for ACTH, T is for TSH, C is for calcitonin, H is for HCG, A again is for ADH receptor, especially B2 receptor, ADH, vasopressin receptor, B2, B2 receptor, M is for melatonin stimulating hormone, MSH, and P is for PTH. Along with that, you have, this is called fat cham, okay, fat cham. F for FSH, A for ACTH, T for TSH, C for calcitonin, it is not calcitriol. I want you to remember it is calcitonin, H for HCG, A for ADH receptor, which is especially V2 receptor, M for MSH and P for PTH, right? P for PTH. Along with that, you have one more, which you can remember, HCG, okay? You can remember it as BCG. B is mainly for beta blockers. Beta blockers also act by this mechanism. C is for calcitonin and G is for glucagon. <coughs> calcitonin, I've already told you here, right? You need to remember this beta blockers and glucagon alone. Okay. So fat champ, FSH, ACTH, TSH, calcitonin, HCG, ADH, which is V2 receptor, MSH, and PTH. Along with that, you need to remember beta blockers and glucagon. Along with that, you need to remember beta blockers and glucagon. Okay. So, among the GI, there are only two things which are very, very important. One is somatostatin. Somatostatin. So, how did how does GI act? GI acts by the down regulation of cyclic AMP. This is up regulation of cyclic AMP production and this is down regulation of cyclic AMP production. Somatostatin and the other one is alpha 2 blockers. Right? Somatostatin and alpha-2 blockers. Somatostatin and alpha-2 blockers are the major GI protein activating uh, thing. Okay, hormones. Somatostatin and alpha-2 blockers. Now moving on to GQ, what is the mechanism? Which are the second messengers of GQ? We told you it is diacylglycerol plus IP3. Diacylglycerol plus IP3, which is the enzyme which is activated, it is protein kinase C. It is not protein kinase A, it is protein kinase C. So in this, again, I'll tell you one small uh, mnemonic you can remember that it is go goat go okay go goat go so yes you can remember g for gnrh g for 
G and R H, right? Again, another G for gastrin. Another G for gastrin. O for oxytocin. O for oxytocin. Then you have A for AT2, angiotensin 2 receptors, along with ADH receptors. In this we saw it is GS, we saw it is V2 receptors, whereas in this it is V1 and V3 receptors. V1 and V3 receptors. Okay. And T is TRH. T is TRH. And this is again GHRH. This is GHRH. Okay. GNRH and GHRH. Both are acting on the GQ subunit. Okay. Another G is for gastrin. O is for oxytocin. A for AT2 receptors, which angiotensin 2 receptors. ADH, V1 and V3 receptors. And T is for TRH. Okay. TSH, you must remember, comes in GS, whereas TSH comes, TSH comes in GS, whereas TRH comes in GQ. This is calcitonin and not calcitriol. Okay, you must remember this. Calcitonin and not calcitriol. Calcitriol we saw in the group 1 hormone. Right, vitamin D. Group 1 hormone. Right, so I hope you will remember this. This is very, very important concept. G protein coupled receptor is very, very frequently asked in the questions. This mechanism of action is also very, very important. You need to remember the enzyme names also. Okay, yes. So this is an example. I mean, this is just to show you the G protein coupled receptor. See, you can see it is traversing the membrane seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. <clears throat> okay, it will traverse the membrane seven times. Okay, it is attached to GTP. GTP is in inactive state. And once there is an agonist which is acting on that, it is getting converted to GTP. Okay, in the stimulated state, which causes the uh, down upregulation of the cyclic KMP production. Okay, so this is a G protein receptor. It is also called a serpentine receptor. Okay, yes. So let's move on to the next one. This is tyrosine kinase receptors. What is this? This is tyrosine kinase. Tyrosine kinase. So among this, you need to remember, it is mainly the growth factors which are acting. Okay, which is the best growth factor that we know? It is insulin. Insulin-like growth factor. First is insulin. Insulin-like growth factor. Epidermal growth factor, fibroblast growth factor, right? TGF, okay, TGF. Okay, all these growth factors all act on this tyrosine kinase receptor. What does this do? All these act on the tyrosine kinase receptor. So what does this tyrosine kinase? Basically, they have tyrosine residues on the channel. They have some ty tyrosine residues. Okay, tyrosine kinase. They have some tyrosine residues on this um, you know, the transmembrane domain of this ligand binding of the hormone, this receptor. Okay, this tyrosine kinase receptor, they have a ligand binding domain and a transmembrane domain and also a tyrosine kinase domain. This tyrosine kinase domain will have tyrosine residues. This is the mechanism of action. So, when, when this, is, when this uh, insulin acts on this, what does this do? It stimulates the MAP kinase. What does it stimulate? It stimulates MAP kinase. It stimulates enzyme called MAP kinase. Because of this enzyme stimulation, what does this do? It causes PI3K formation. PI3K is formed. PI3K is formed, which then acts on AKT1 and 2, which opens up the GLUT channels. Which opens up the GLUT channels. GLUT channels are open. Because of which, the insulin resistance is mediated. Okay, Because of which, the glucose is being transported. Because of which, the glucose is being transported and uptake into the cells happens. Okay, you remember the GLUT receptors, it uh, mediates the glucose entry into the cells. Is it it? So, this insulin acts on this tyrosine kinase receptor, especially all the growth factors. You can remember this very easily. Insulin along with the growth factors, right? So, insulin, insulin-like growth factor, epidermal growth factor, fibroblast growth factor, TGF, all those things, they act on this tyrosine kinase receptor. What does this tyrosine kinase receptor do? It, it activates the MAP kinase. Once the MAP kinase is activated, it causes the activation of PI3K, which then acts on AKT1 and 2 and causes the opening of the GLUT4 channels. Right? It activates the GLUT4 channels. Because of this GLUT4 channel opening, what does it do? The calcium, the glucose entry is uh, taken up into the cells. Okay? So, this is the example of tyrosine kinase receptor. Right? Let's now move on to this JAK-STAT pathway. Okay? What is this JAK-STAT pathway? Jack stat pathway. What is this? Janus kinase. Janus kinase. Janus kinase. 
So what are the most important examples for this? I'll just tell you three. The most important ones are growth hormone, right? Growth hormone, prolactin, and erythropoietin. And erythropoietin. Growth hormone, prolactin, and erythropoietin. Okay, Janus kinase, growth hormone, prolactin, and erythropoietin. Jackstart pathway, Janus kinase pathway, it is growth hormone, prolactin, and EPO. These are the three important ones. Okay? Okay. So, what happens in this? Because of this activation of the Janus kinase, you know, this uh, receptor, what does it do? The start pathway is activated. Then what happens because of this? This start pathway comes and binds to the DNA, which causes transcription, right? This is a second messenger in this, right? So, this Jack start pathway. This is Janus kinase is getting activated because of that. The start pathway is getting act activated due to phosphorylation and this comes into the this enters the nucleus and then causes gene transcription. Okay, growth hormone, prolactin and erythropoietin. Growth hormone, prolactin, erythropoietin. In the uh, tyrosine kinase, you saw insulin and some growth factors. In Jackstad pathway, you have growth hormone, prolactin and erythropoietin. Okay, so next is, this is serine threonine kinase. What is this? Serine threonine kinase. So, the mechanism for the first two are very, very important. G protein coupled receptor and uh, the th tyrosine kinase receptor. This jack start pathway is quite easy. You need to remember jack pathway is activated. Jack receptor is getting activated because of the start pathway is getting phosphorylated. And then that goes into the uh, nucleus to cause the transcription. Right? This is this is quite easy to remember. Okay. Then next is serine threonine kinase. This serine threonine kinase, what does it do? It activates. Okay. So, which is the example for serine threonine kinase? Which are the hormones which act through this pathway? You need to remember very, very important one. What is it? Inhibin. Right? Inhibin. And TGF beta. TGF beta. TGF alpha acts through the tyrosine kinase receptor, whereas TGF beta acts through the serine threonine kinase. Serine threonine kinase. So, inhibin. Activin and inhibin, activin and TGF beta act through this mechanism. TGF beta is very, very important. You need to remember this. It does not act through the, like, uh, though it is a growth factor, it does not act through the tyrosine kinase, but it acts through the serine threonine, threonine kinase pathway. Okay. Which are the hormones? Inhibin, activin, and TGF beta. Inhibin, activin, and TGF beta. Okay. So, based on the second messengers, we have seen we have G protein coupled receptors. We have tyrosine kinase receptors, we have Jackstat pathway receptors and serine threonine kinase receptors. Okay, all these things are for the group 2 hormones which have a cell membrane receptor. Group 2 hormones, cell membrane receptor, these are the various second messengers which are acting. Okay, these are the various second messengers which are acting. So, let me just sum up this for you. So, we have group 1 hormones, group 2 hormones, right? So, group 1 hormones are basically those which have an intracellular receptor. And those group 2 hormones are those which have a plasma membrane receptor or a cell membrane receptor. How does this act? It acts through a receptor hormone complex formation, which goes and binds to the hormone response element on the DNA, which thereby is causing gene transcription. Next is group 2 hormones which act on the second messenger molecules. Right. So, these um, group 1 hormones are usually lipophilic. Whereas... Group 2 hormones are usually soluble in water. They are hydrophilic. Okay. They can be transport proteins. They cannot be transport proteins. And the plasma half-life is long for this group 1 hormones. Whereas for group 2 hormones, it is short half-life. They have a short half-life. Okay. This is just to sum up the group 1 and group 2 hormones easily for you. Okay. I hope you got it. Right. Next, based on the nature of hormone action, they can either be local hormones or general hormones or systemic hormones. Local hormones or systemic hormones. What do you mean by systemic or general hormones? They are secreted in one place. They go into circulation to act at another place. Okay, they are secreted in one place. They go into circulation to act at another place, which are most of the hormones. Whereas local hormones, they are secreted locally and act locally, especially testosterone. Okay, usually like a paracrine action. They are local hormones. They are testosterone. So, how have we seen the classification? We saw first, so what is hormone? Then we saw the classification based on the structure, that is the chemical nature of the uh, hormone. And next is the based on the mechanism of action, group 1 and group 2 hormones, type 1, type 2 hormones. And next is the based on the nature of the hormone action. 
okay so by this we now complete this one i just have a few questions lined up for you you can just try answering this right so these are easy questions based completely on what we have discussed earlier the effects of cyclic amp is mediated by guanylyl cyclase adenylyl cyclase protein kinase a protein kinase c or ip3 dag so which is the enzyme which is act causing this can any of you try answering this is it guanylyl cyclase adenylyl cyclase protein kinase a protein kinase c ip3 or dag so the answer for this question is the answer for this question is can you please answer in the chat box okay i just saw this question for every hormone one gtp will be lost yes i just saw the question so that phosphate will be recycled right one phosphate is getting added that phosphate will again get lost and then it will be added into another process it is not getting lost effectively it will be just the phosphor the phosphorus compound the phosphate compound will just be shifting places that is what happens here okay so effects of cyclic amp is mediated by protein kinase a okay it is mediated by protein kinase a okay so protein kinase c and ip3 dag it is in gq right gs is this one cyclic amp okay when a cyclic amp down regulated that is gi okay gi okay the following hormone has cell membrane receptors which of the following hormone has cell membrane receptors t3 t4 testosterone aldosterone or tsh which of the following has cell membrane receptor is it t3 t4 testosterone aldosterone or tsh what is the answer for this what is the answer for this the answer for this is tsh the answer for this is tsh okay catecholamine this is aldosterone this corticocortical hormone and testosterone is a sex steroid and those uh, t3 t4 all these are group 1 hormones right all these are group 1 hormones whereas this is a group 2 hormone which has a cell membrane receptor group 2 hormone you must remember t3 t4 has though it is from the thyroid gland it is having a group 1 uh, it is a group 1 hormone and tsh is a group 2 hormone you need to remember this difference okay yes okay which of the following does not need a second messenger which of the following does not need a second messenger is it fsh lh glucagon or estrogen which of the following does not need a second messenger is it fsh lh glucagon or estrogen which of it does not need a second messenger so what do we mean by that question we mean that it is a does not need a second messenger means it is a group 1 hormone i mean essentially asking which is one which of which one of these is a group 1 hormone which one of these is a group 1 hormone it is estrogen group 1 hormone is estrogen right all these three have gs they act on the gs subunit right gs subunit so this is a group 2 hormone whereas estrogen is a group 2 group 1 hormone right okay so now, now the last question the following hormones increase the level of cyclic amp except vasopressin glucagon pth 125 dihydroxycholic calciferol the following hormones increase the level of cyclic amp except vasopressin glucagon pth 125 dihydroxycholic calciferol yes so what is the answer for this we know we know glucagon right then pth and also vasopressin especially the v2 receptor it increases the levels of cyclic amp right what about 125 dihydroxycholic calciferol that is vitamin d which is a group 1 hormone which is a group 1 hormone which does not have any action on cyclic amp so this is the answer for this question okay i hope all of you found this interesting i know this is a quite a laborious thing to understand but when you sit back and re read it once again you will find it very easy to understand once you have learned the, you know you know have heard this uh, topic me teaching you this topic 
So I want all of you to go back and read this and revise this today itself so that you will be able to retain this for a longer time in your memory. Okay. Thank you so much. Dr. Raghu, thank you so much.